Dear children, as we were discussing the different types of the agents which help in the formation of the various types of landforms on the surface of earth or beneath the surface of the earth or in the areas of high altitudes where the glacier is a very active agent of gradation. So, till now we have talked about the three important types of the agents, one the river work, number two the underground water and number three the moving ice which is also known as glacier. And now we will be talking about the work of wind which is also an active agent helping in the formation of various types of landform. Work of wind is more prominent in the areas of deserts where the soil particles are loose. And why the soil particles are loose children in the deserts you must be knowing because there is lack of moisture and lack of vegetation. So, that is how we have the loose particles of soil in the desert areas and these are the areas where the action of wind is very very prominent. Now, we talk about the erosional work of wind. Wind just like water and ice has little erosive effect on the rocks. The loose rock material carried by wind acts as its tool in wearing them down. Children, I would like to give a small example from your daily life. Like you use the sandpaper to just to uh, smoothen the area. So, likewise the wind filled with the sand smoothens the rocks and does the erosive action. The work of wind is limited to the heights close to the ground. Why? You must be knowing that the sand it carries along with it or the soil particles it carries along with it, it cannot lift to a greater height because of the weight of the particles of the sand. So, the work of the wind is limited to the limited heights which are closer to the ground and wind is unable to carry the soil particles or the sand particles up in the air. Wind action also depends upon children mind it. This depends upon the size of grains carried above and moved along the ground. And number two, the speed of the wind and of course, the length of the time it continues to blow that also influence its erosive work. So, we have done the three important factors. Number one, that is the size of grains on which the erosive action of the wind is dependent. Number two, that is the speed of the wind and of course, how much time the wind continues to blow that is an another important factor. And now, we take up the different landforms which are formed by wind due to its erosive action. Number one, the paddy plains. Number two, playas. Number three, mushroom rock and number 4 the deflation basin. So, first we take up that what are the paddy plains? With the erosive action of the wind the mountain gets reduced leaving an insel berg. So, you must be thinking of that what an insel berg is. Insel berg is a remnant of a mountain. In this way the high relief in the desert area is reduced to low featureless plains which are known as paddy plains. So, look at your screens and you can have a visual of how the paddy plains they look like. This visual shows you that some area is higher than the normal ground level. That feature is known as an inselberg. So, that means that is a remnant of the mountain. Now, another feature formed is playas. Playa is an inland drainage basin with the shallow saline lake of 
fluctuating volume, encircled usually by the mud sheets. Children, as I've told you, that's a saline lake. So why saline lake? Because in the desert areas, the plenty of salts are found in the, on the surface. So that results into the water saline. In the dry climate of the desert, the water remains for a short period, only due to the high rate of evaporation. So why high rate of evaporation? Because of the high temperature in the dry climate of the deserts. So the rate of evaporation is very high. So palayas, they contain the deposits of salt. You must be knowing that the water with the salt, as just now we have talked about the saline lake. So that means the lake having the water with the plenty of the salts in that. So then what will happen to that saline lake when the rate of evaporation is more? What happens? The rate of evaporation results to the drying up of the water and leaving behind the deposits of the salt and that is the playa. On your screens, you can see this visual which shows you the feature of playas. As I told you, these are the salt lakes where we have the saline water and the water evaporates and only the salts are remaining in that part. Now, another important feature formed by the wind in the desert areas is a mushroom rock. When I say mushroom rock, so that resembles the mushrooms which you eat. The maximum erosion of the rock occurs slightly above its ground level where the sand content in the air is high. As earlier also I've told you children that the wind works more effectively near the ground area because it can carry the high quantity of the sand along with it. So the action of the wind is very effective close to the ground area. Due to the greater erosion of the lower portion, the rock assumes the form of a mushroom. Mushroom children, you try to recollect how it looks like. It has a stem and on the top it has got a broader portion. So the same type of the feature is formed by the erosive action of the wind where it erodes much larger on the lower parts and lower erosion is done, less erosion is done on the upper portions. The isolated great night rock masses near the Jodhpur in Rajasthan are the examples of the mushroom rock. So this visual you can see how the mushroom rock looks like. Isn't it the true reflection of the mushrooms that we eat? More erosion on the lower side and less erosion on the upper side. So it looks like a mushroom and known as a mushroom rock. And the another feature is deflation basin. Many depressions are formed by the deflation action of the wind and these depressions are known as deflation basins. Now children, after the erosive landforms, we take up the depositional landforms formed by the wind. So how the deposition takes place? When the velocity of the wind decreases, it starts dropping its load. And what is the load of the wind, children? That we have just now discussed, the sand particles or the soil particles which the wind carries along with it. That is the load of the wind. A dune has a long and gentle windward slope. So children, whenever the hill or a mound is formed, it always has two sides. One side is known as a windward side and the other side is always known as the leeward side. As you must have read in this book itself, the relief rainfall. You must have read about the two sides of the slope of the mountain, the windward side where the wind moves up the side of the hill and does 
its maximum rainfall or sheds its maximum amount of the moisture on that side. And the other side where the wind descends, that side of the mountain is known as a leeward side. And the same way, because dune gives a shape of a hill or a mount, it also has got the two sides. One is a windward side, where the side of the mount or the dune is very gentle and long. And the leeward side is always steeper than the windward side. Now the last feature, the depositional feature formed by the wind is known as Barkhan. It's a typical sand dune with a crescent shaped front having two horns or wings towards the leeward side. As just now I've told you that the leeward side of the sand dune is steeper than the windward side of the sand dune. So Barakhan, when we talk about that, it has also got the crescent shape, having two horns or wings towards the leeward slope, which is a steeper than the windward slope. So this visual shows you how the Barakhan looks like. And generally in the desert areas, children, the direction in which the wind moves, the sand dunes also keep shifting towards that side. So that is the movement of the sand dunes in the desert areas and automatically in the direction of the wind, the sand dunes also keep shifting. So Barakhan and sand dunes, these are the two important depositional features formed by the wind. Children, besides all these four agents which we have discussed till now, running water, underground water, glacier, and the wind. There's another important feature also, which is very effective on the coastal areas, that is known as the sea waves or the currents. So sea waves and the currents, that is also known as one of the agents of gradation, which help in the formation of the different landforms, of course, near the coastal area because we are talking about the sea waves or the currents. So this agent of gradation we'll be discussing later. And till now, we must uh, remember that what all features we have done formed by the all different agents, moving water, underground water, glacier, which is also known as a moving ice. And lastly, what we have done right now that is the action of the wind. And the sea waves, as I've just told you, will be taking up later because that is also one of the important agents. Thank you.